Alright, welcome to another video, and before we get started, I'd like to take a quick minute to thank all the Patreon supporters and YouTube channel members whose names you see scrolling across the screen right now. Uh, they make this financially possible, and without you, I probably wouldn't be here making videos, so thank you. Alright, so today we're going to be taking a look at this little plane from eSky, it's the ES2, or equal to. Um, it's the mini ES2, actually. It's kind of an updated version of the uh, eSky equal that you've seen on my channel that I have mine all outfitted for FPV. This one is much smaller. Um, it's quite uh, small and lightweight. I'll put the all up weight on the screen because I don't remember it right offhand, but I can tell you that it's definitely less than 250 grams with a battery all up ready to fly. Um, I do believe they sell it bind and fly. They did send me this radio with it. It's the eSky Mini 6X. It's a little, uh, pretty decent little radio actually. The gimbals feel good. It's got a couple of switches on the top for uh, different stabilized modes and an arm switch over here has some trims and everything pretty basic little radio but for a little uh kind of beginner plane like this it's a pretty decent little radio i'm actually kind of surprised at the quality of it uh, but the plane is pretty nice um you can see it is set up as a tail dragger with the main gear pretty far forward so when you landed in the grass like we're flying out here today um, it can land easily without uh, fear of tipping forward, tipping over, which is kind of an issue with landing tail grass, uh, tail draggers in this all grass. You do have a little uh, tail wheel back here on the rudder, kind of mounts on the rudder and steers with it. Works pretty well. Um, I've seen videos of this taking off and landing in on pavement, but like I said, we're kind of out here in the middle of nowhere in the fields and a little grass flying field here in the backyard, so we don't have much pavement available. So. We're going to be flying from grass, and unfortunately it doesn't have enough power to get off the ground in the grass out here. But it lands just fine, so uh, we'll be hand launching it, and you'll see a couple of landings here and there. Um, as far as flight controls, you do have ailerons, and you have a full flying uh, elevator back here. Basically a stabil stabilator, as I think is the uh, kind of term for that. And then you have a rudder back here, and like I said, with your little steerable tail wheel. It is a pusher motor design, keeps the uh, the propeller kind of protected back here, it crashes and things like that. Um, it's a little tiny uh, brushless motor, I don't know the specs on it as far as uh, KV rating or diameter or size or anything like that. Um, ailerons work with a single servo with this bell crank mechanism here, and they all come uh, centered up and adjust it well from the factory so they didn't really have to adjust any of that but they are available once you pop the wing off the wing mounts with these two screws on the top and when you pop the wing off you can get to the uh, adjustment at the servo itself and i believe there's some adjustments yeah there's some adjustments out here at the bell crank as well I'm trying to uh film this on my phone out in the sun it's hard to see the screen so i apologize if it's uh, out of frame a bit here and there but your uh, elevator and rudder servos are accessible through this little opening in the bottom of the fuselage right there which is nice i'm glad they did that and as far as what's inside the fuselage you can pull the canopy off which by the way the canopy is just mounted with this little uh, magnet and a catch on the front just kind of snaps in place fits well like that but it comes with a 2s 7.4 volt 650 milliamp hour lipo they did send me two of these i'm not sure how many comes standard when you buy it the pnp um but i got two of them with this one and but one tends to fly for quite a while i've actually actually not pushed it all the way to the end of the the charge yet i tip, t typically tend to fly about 10 10 to 12 minutes and i'm pretty happy with it satisfied at that point and uh they do estimate that it'll fly about 15 minutes is what they're specifying so I, I think it's pretty pretty accurate should be easy to get 15 minutes out of it um inside here you can see there is a move the battery cable out of the way you can see there's an all-in-one board in there that includes the uh receiver and a stabilizer as it does have a a kind of stabilizer built in that does auto leveling in one mode and just rate mode stabilization in the other kind of like an acro is about the best i would compare it to but you do have a self-leveling stabilized mode that's the easiest to fly it in 
and the receiver is built in on that you can kind of see the little ipx connector right there little quax and my receiver wire it it was kind of buried down in the fuselage i just kind of tucked it under the wing there when i mounted the wing just so that it kind of hangs out and a little better signal reception in my mind at least uh the servos are some unusual five wire servos they're not standard like a power ground and signal there's five wires to each servo and you can see that's actually the little coupler you have a cable up there it makes it easy to plug in your aileron servo when you remove the wing so i'm not sure um how easy it would be to bypass that stabilizer run a standard pw and receiver if you wanted to try something like that later uh, but as far as the servos they work well they they're smooth and they center well and everything i don't really see any need to change anything unless you want it to pull that stabilizer out or maybe just kind of experiment with some different electronics um but anyway we're going to go ahead and uh get it in the air and do a little bit of, little bit of flying so uh let's get on with that now all right so we're just getting everything uh powered up and ready to go we're going to turn on the radio and then plug in the airplane and uh, it'll kind of initialize the stabilizer and everything should be ready to go here in a minute. We'll do a quick control check to make sure everything responds as, as expected. And then we'll go ahead and arm the motor. And you switch the little arm switch to on, you see the motor starts spinning slowly, kind of like a little idle power setting. It, it does that always while it's on. So we'll go ahead and throttle up and throw it in the air and kind of fly it around a little bit. Now it is a little bit windy today. Um, hopefully it's not kind of messing up the audio too bad and the microphone, but we'll make the best of it. See, so yeah, the little airplane flows good in the air. You can see we're flying in the stabilized mode and it, uh, it it's slow and smooth and even despite the, the wind, it's a little bit gusty wind today. The wind's kind of coming from my back right now, but even so, it's, uh, Handles it pretty good and flies pretty smooth, especially to be as small and light as the airplane is. And you kind of see there how tight it will turn around. It's very easy to keep it in a small area. You can see I'm just kind of keeping it over the backyard here, not even out flying over the field or anything like that. Um, we'll do a nice little close, slow pass and turn here. Just kind of get a look at it. I'm going to try to keep the airplane in close in for the most part. I know it's kind of hard to film these. I'm filming with a head mounted GoPro and it's not the easiest to film. Especially when they get far away, they, they tend to get easier or not so easy to see anyway. Um yeah, it's pretty good pretty good flying little airplane. I'm pretty happy with it. So we'll kinda of float it in, do a nice little landing right here at our feet. And like I said, you can see with that landing gear pretty far forward, you can see how easy it land it handles landing in the grass like that. So we'll go ahead and get back in the air now. We're going to go ahead and uh, gain a little bit of altitude. I wanted to talk about aerobatics. Um, I did watch a couple of other reviews and they pointed out that the low airplane doesn't have enough power to do a loop and I even got an email from uh, eSky reminding me that it was intended for beginners and not aerobatic and doesn't have enough power to do a loop. And maybe not axial rolls either to the left or to the right and definitely not inverted either. Um, but yeah, all sarcasm aside, you can see it's able to do all these with an experienced pilot. But to be fair, I am fighting it. The uh, stabilizer on board is kind of working against me the whole time I'm doing these maneuvers. And they're not very clean as a result of that. We'll go ahead and do another little roll down here. A little bit closer to see it. And another loop. And, I mean, to be honest, for an experienced pilot, it's not really that hard to do. But it would be easier to do these maneuvers with a more aerobatic airplane without the stabilizer on board. But I just wanted to point out that it is possible. Uh, but, yeah, I guess we'll just uh, continue flying around as intended here and, and maybe focus more on thinking about this from a, a beginner's perspective. Would I recommend the airplane for a beginner? Um, that's an easy yes. Definitely I would recommend it. It's so light. Well, I mean, being as light as it is, for one, you don't need to register it or anything like that, which is going to be a plus if you just want to fly at home. And um, especially with all the new regulations coming out and everything, it's it's that 250 ground limit is 
definitely a benefit. But despite its small size and weight, it still flies pretty decent. It's even able to handle a little bit of gusty air and wind, like I said today. Um, you can see I'm able to slow it almost to a stop. Kind of stalled a little bit right there. But uh, with that little bit of headwind, it's almost enough to stop it in the air. And when it does stall, it's so light, it just a little bit of power has it flying again and it quickly recovers and that stabilizer does help. But being as light as it is, that's beneficial should you crash it. I doubt you would break it anyway. It's so lightweight, it doesn't really carry enough energy to break itself in a crash. At least that's what I'm kind of thinking. But yeah, it. it I, I think you would have a pretty good... Uh, pretty good experience with this as a first airplane especially if you have some help from experience an experienced pilot to uh, just take it up and make sure it flies and everything and then kind of talk you through the controls and kind of getting used to it and everything um, even with no help at all with just maybe a little bit of time on a, on a basic simulator you can download a free simulator that that'll work with the radio um, I do believe this little free sky or free sky this e-sky uh, Mini 6X. I do believe it'll work with a simulator based on what I've read about it online, but I haven't tried it myself and verified that. So take that with a grain of salt. But uh, even if you have to pay for a simulator with a controller, they're, they're still pretty fun and they're a valuable learning tool for a beginner. But the point I was getting at with a little bit of experience on a simulator, I do believe you would probably be successful in teaching yourself to fly this without any outside help. Um, Crashes are inevitable, but I do believe it would survive a crash, being as small and lightweight and slow as it is. And you can see right here, we're just kind of floating it right along, kind of getting out of the frame there. The, the sun's over to my left, so I'm kind of flying with the sun to my back, trying to keep the sun out of my eyes, pretty much. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty happy with it overall. There's not really a lot to complain about. Um, now, as far as flight characteristics, the, the little airplane does fly as small and lightweight as it is, but the stabilizer does tend to smooth things out. Um, it's It doesn't feel like a bigger, heavier airplane like, like some trainers do. It definitely feels small and lightweight. And by that I mean it, it kind of gets tossed around in the wind, but it does handle it. And it, it doesn't really carry a lot of momentum through. You can kind of see right there, we just kind of did a little stall test. We just kind of rode the elevator all the way to the ground. But yeah, we're going to run out here and grab it and get it back in the air. Right, so we're back flying again. Um, so yeah, what I was saying, getting back to that stabilizer, it definitely helps um, flying down low like this and in the wind. But it, it takes a little bit of getting used to when, like, basically I'm flying around just doing rudder turns right now. Um, it will definitely teach you to use the rudder, which is a plus, I guess. So basically when you're flying along straight and level, you just kind of steer the airplane around with the rudder and it throttles up in the turns and kind of keeps its altitude and everything for you. Now, I don't think there's any actual active altitude hole per se, but it's more like pitch and roll stabilization. But there's enough rudder, enough throttle mixed in with the rudder in that self-leveling stabilized mode that it will maintain altitude for you to some degree. It keeps you from losing altitude, at least in the turns. And you just kind of steer it around with the rudder. Yeah, so we'll go ahead and get it back on the air now and power down, or on the ground rather, and power down and uh, call it a flight and call it the end of the video. So that's been my flight review of the eSky Mini EAS 2. Um, but yeah, if you're interested in it, uh, there will be some links below the video. And uh, thank you to Eastcar for sending me this one, and thanks to you for watching it. So uh, hopefully it's been enjoyable.